This is video two of the specific immune responses. In this video, we're going to go over the details of the cell-mediated immune response and the antibody-mediated immune response. When we left our story, our macrophage out on patrol had engulfed the pathogen, processed its antigen, and moved the antigen to its own surface and to make an MHC antigen complex. And now we have an antigen-presenting macrophage. This creation of the antigen MHC complex is important because helper T cells ignore MHC as we would expect, but they also ignore antigens. So this helper T cell would go right past this bad guy, this pathogen, and ignore it, not recognize it. But when it sees the MHC antigen complex, it pays attention. This draws its attention. Cytotoxic T cells behave the same way. They ignore healthy body cells and they ignore pathogens. We go right past moving along. What it does recognize and pay special attention to is the MHC antigen complex, the combination. When the cytotoxic T cell binds to the MHC antigen complex, it gets primed. This priming allows it to recognize the specific antigen that it's looking for. It's preparing to go search and destroy but it's waiting for the go-ahead signal from the helper T cell. When the helper T cell binds to the macrophage, the macrophage secretes a chemical called interleukin-1. This chemical signal is the macrophage telling the helper T cell, look, there's been an invasion. I caught and killed one of the bad guys. This is the uniform to show you as proof. In response, the helper T cell secretes a different chemical called interleukin-2. Interleukin-2 is a call to arms. It stimulates the already primed cytotoxic T cell and causes the cytotoxic T cell to go through several rounds of division to produce an army of cells specifically prepared to go fight this invader. This army of cells is then subdivided into two populations. Effector cells, which are going to go out and do battle, and memory cells which will be held in reserve to handle any later exposures to the same pathogen. The effector cells move through the body looking for infected body cells. They ignore healthy body cells with MHC markers and they ignore the pathogen with, it, with its foreign antigens. What it's looking for is a body cell that has been infected. A body cell that has been infected will be an antigen presenting cell. When the cytotoxic T cell sees an infected body cell, it goes into action. It will bind to that, the MHC antigen complex and release a chemical called perforins. In what's called a touch kill response, the perforins punch holes in the infected cell, causing it to lice, spilling out its contents, and thus preventing the spread of those pathogens further. So by sacrificing our own body cells, we're protecting the health of the healthy cells and of the individual in total. The cytotoxic T cell then moves on to find other cells to fight. This is why cytotoxic T cells are referred to as killer T cells. So let's do a quick recap. An antigen presenting macrophage is recognized by helper T cells and cytotoxic T cells for its combination of MHC antigens and antigens on its surface. The cytotoxic T cell binds to the antigen presenting cell and gets primed, getting ready to go out and do battle. The helper T cell binds to the macrophage. In response, the macrophage secretes interleukin-1, which signals the hel helper T cell. The helper T cell then secretes interleukin-2, which stimulates the cytotoxic T cell to go through massive divisions, producing an army of cells ready to go do battle. That army of cells is subdivided into two populations, memory cells and effector cells, that will go out and do battle. The effector cells then move out looking for infected body cells. When they come across an infected body cell, they attach, recognizing that MHC antigen complex of the antigen presenting infected body cell, secrete a chemical called perforins, which leads to lysis, the destruction of that cell. In doing so, we're reducing the spread of that pathogen throughout the body. 
After the battle is over, the level of effector cells drops. However, we retain some of the memory cells. This means that at a future time, if we're exposed to the same pathogen again, we will, the response will be faster and greater because we will have be starting from a small army of cells already in place. And when we start to divide, we can create very quickly a much larger army of cells to respond. We don't have to start from scratch. This increased efficiency confers immunity. Now we have to back up and address the other side of the battle. While the cell-mediated immune response is taking care of the cells that have already been infected, the antibody-mediated immune response needs to handle those pathogens that have yet to infect cells. We need a bit of background on B cells. B cells are lymphocytes that have bound antibodies on their surface. There are many different varieties of B cells, all with slightly different versions of these shape-specific antibodies. These antibodies will match the shapes of specific antigens found on the surface of pathogens. When a B cell encounters a pathogen whose antigens match the shapes of its antibodies, it will engage. This engagement primes the B cell, preparing it to produce and secrete specifically shaped antibodies to match this antigen. It will produce massive quantities of these antibodies. All it needs and all it's waiting for is a signal from the helper T cell. The helper T cell needs to hear from a macrophage that there's been an invasion. So, that brings us back to the beginning of the story. A macrophage has engulfed and processed a pathogen, putting the antigen on display alongside its MHC marker, become an antigen-presenting macrophage. A helper T cell takes notice and binds to the macrophage. The macrophage secretes interleukin-1, and in response, the helper T cell secretes interleukin-2. This interleukin-2 acts as a signal to a B cell, a B cell that's already been primed, having already interacted with the pathogen. This primed B cell receives a signal from interleukin-2, and that initiates a series of cell divisions that give rise to a massive army of B cells that are designed specifically to fight off this particular infection. This massive army of B cells is subdivided into two populations, a subpopulation of effector cells and a subpopulation of memory cells. The effector cells are going to start producing copious amounts of, of specifically shaped antibodies and the memory cells are going to be held in reserve. The memory cells are held back to deal with future exposures to the same pathogen, while the effector cells begin producing massive quantities of specifically shaped antibodies. These antibodies are going to circulate in the blood and bind to the specific antigens on the pathogen that they're designed to bind to. The antibodies will circulate in the blood and when they've come across a pathogen that they're designed to stick to, they'll bind to the pathogen. This accomplishes two things. With all these antibodies bound to this pathogen, it's difficult for this pathogen to go and infect other body cells. Also, the bound antibodies mark the pathogens for destruction by macrophages. The final deed is done by the macrophage that comes in and engulfs the pathogen. So, in review, we begin and end with a macrophage that engulf and present the evidence that has been an invasion. Helper T cells, which ignore MHC and ignore antigens, bind to the MHC antigen complex, receive signal from the, ma the macrophage that has been an invasion, and send a signal to an already primed B cell. Once that B cell receives a signal, of interleukin-2, that already primed B cell, it undergoes a round of divisions creating an army of cells. This army of cells is divided into two subpopulations, memory cells held for later, and effector cells which go into battle. In this case, the B cells don't actually kill anything. All they do is produce massive quantities of specifically shaped proteins called antibodies. These antibodies are designed to recognize and stick to the surface antigens on the pathogen, 
marking them for destruction by the macrophage. After the illness has been fought off, the effector cells go away, and the levels of circulating antibodies drops. However, if we're exposed to the same pathogen at a later time, we can skip the priming step and begin our army buildup from a larger base of cells, so that the subsequent, was, was subsequent response is both faster and greater in magnitude. This is the basis of immunity. Here's a graph that shows that effect. On the first exposure, we can see that the level of antibodies rises over the first 30 days. And after we fight off the infection, the level of antibodies drops. But on a second exposure to that same pathogen, look at the slope of the line. We get a faster response, and look at the height of the line. We get a much greater magnitude of response. Over time, as we build up antibodies and memory cells, the responses become more and more efficient, and that confers immunity. Notice that the, re the response to some uh, antigen A has no effect on our ability to fight off some different pathogen. We'd have to build up a specific immune response to that pathogen also. Now we've seen both the overview and the details for the specific immune responses. Take some time, review the videos, look through your notes, and bring to class any questions you may have.